How's it going? It's Razine here for Astrophotography. In today's video, it's the Night Sky in March, a curated list of targets I think might be interesting to you to photograph or view in the night skies of March. Three guesses to where this series got its name from. The following targets are all based off of a 1.5 times crop factor camera sensor, so that's like a DSLR from Nikon, or in my case, the Zwo SI 071 MC Pro. I've picked targets for a multitude of focal lengths, all the way from wide to super deep. This is just to give you some ideas and maybe some inspiration. Well, let's get going. At 50 millimeters for you super wide angle people, I'm giving you a constellation, and that is of Cassiopeia. Now, if you center your field of view on the star Rukba, then you'll be able to get the entire constellation in, as well as the heart and soul nebulas, and quite a lot of interesting juicy targets all around. So if you're at 50 millimeters with a DSLR, why don't you consider that region of the sky and get a nice wide field constellation shot. Between 100 and 200 millimeters, only until half past one in the morning, unfortunately, is the best I really could find, is the Spaghetti Nebula. So this is an enormous, intricate, like complicated bubble of gas and emission nebula. That's, that's absolutely breathtaking to look at, but just enormous. So you need those wide focal lengths to take a photo of it. But that's what, if that's you, then go give the Spaghetti Nebula a tickle. Now between 300 and 500 millimeters, the wider the better here admittedly, so maybe you guys with 100 to 200 millimeters, this could still be good for you. Go over to the Bubble Nebula in Cassiopeia. Now not just the Bubble Nebula though, this is too wide for getting really good detail in the bubble. You get the Bubble Nebula, you get Star Clusters, you get the Northern Lagoon Nebula, as well as the Lobster Claw Nebula, which is a fascinating DSO in the night sky. So, if that appeals to you, emission-based nebulas, go over there and have a look at those. Now March being very much within the start of galaxy season, 500, 600 millimeters, there's only one target I'm gonna really recommend for you. That is in Virgo, and that is Mercurian's chain. The most, one of the most impressive clusters of galaxies that you can fit into one field of view in galaxy season for the Northern Hemisphere. So, why don't you consider giving Mercurian's chain a look at? It's an interesting chain of galaxies that starts small and almost looks 3D as it pops out the frame, resulting in one larger cluster at the end which almost resembles a, a face in space. So I definitely be recommending you to check out Mercurian's chain. At 700 to 800 millimeters of focal length, I'll be recommending the Monkey Head Nebula. Now this is an emission type nebula and it's available till about one o'clock in the morning when it will actually drop down too low. From about 2 a.m. I'll then suggest swinging over to Cygnus and to the Tulip Nebula, which is still an emission type nebula. So if you're using things like multi-band path narrowband filters, you don't have to worry about changing your filter out. See, I'm trying to think this one through for you. At 1000 millimeters of focal length, I'll be recommending the Cave Nebula in the constellation of Cepheus. I talk about Cepheus a lot. It's one of my favorite constellations. This is an emission nebula with an interesting dark nebulous region within it and it would really lend itself to broadband and narrowband imaging as well, make a nice HARGB composite image or something like that. So it does drop to about 26 degrees lowest elevation for my latitude, so it doesn't actually drop below 20, but you'd need quite a low northern uh, view to be able to image it throughout the night. But that'd be my recommendation for 1000 millimeters. At 1,500 millimeters of focal length, I'll be recommending the Mephi 1 group in Camelopal Dallas. Camelopal Dallas. This is a very faint galaxy and it looks very interesting. So I think if you pour a lot of integration time on this, especially in the darker skies, you could get a really nice result. It looks like it has a very intricate network to it. So, one and a half thousand millimeters, give that one a go. At 2000 millimeters focal length, I'm giving you the choice of two targets here. You can shoot the tried and tested and always reliable M51 Whirlpool Galaxy, or you can swing over the Kens Vinatishi and shoot a very densely populated globular cluster in M3. No idea how this is in Kens Vinatishi when really it's right next to Buitis and Coma Berenice. No idea how this is technically in Kens Vinatishi when it's right next to Buitis and Coma Berenices, but there you go. I don't make these designations. Now for you planet hunters, unfortunately March is not a very generous month for you. Your only option is Mars. It raises about 47 degrees high elevation, so it's getting lower and lower and lower in the skies, about 7 to 8 p.m. This is from my latitude in the Midlands of the United Kingdom, so of course depending where you are, your highest elevation will vary, but that's the only planet in the sky. So you could probably think about maybe doing some close-up lunar work. Speaking of lunar work, here are the moon phases for 
March. The last quarter moon falls on March the 6th, new moon being March the 13th. First quarter is March the 21st, and the full worm moon is March the 28th. And that's your night sky in March, all wrapped up for you with a pretty bow. Hope this list has been interesting to you, maybe giving you some ideas what to shoot. Let me know if you have any other suggestions down in the comments down below. And then, as always, thanks very much for watching everybody. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you next month.